Thanks, Osa. Awesome. Uh, you've heard my name in connection with the AI SWOT, and uh, uh, Olga said I might reveal what we're planning for this spring workshop. So what we are planning for May 14 is a follow-up on what artificial intelligence means and could mean in the future to uh, smart, sustainable cities and the, the viability. And we're planning for the afternoon, so if you're saving the date, Think of it as a one to five sort of event. For June 1st, uh, the theme tentatively is passive infrastructure. Um, and we'll get back to that during the day, what that could mean. I am an AI professor here at KTH since exactly 15 years ago, but I also work for RICE, so I represent RICE here. Uh, I have a background in, in, in doing foresight. Uh, I spent four and a half years doing uh, an, a project called in Innovation Radar for the, the Commission. And we would like to leverage on the experiences that we had from that project here today. So, if I could have the next slide. Um, up in the right corner there, and you heard Olga mention it, is networked foresight. Now, foresight comes in many colors. One is corporate foresight. Uh, another is strategic foresight. But sometimes you're lucky enough to be able to do network foresight. And that's when you're among friends. You know, the whole idea of a, of a radar is to map out your enemies. That was the original military uh, style of doing a radar. But we'd like to map out our friends as well. As you heard in the, from the internationalization strategic project, it's very important to know what our friends are doing. Uh, and we don't really have any enemies as such. Perhaps some poor examples, but the idea of networked foresight is that we are all friends and trusted friends, and that means that we can sort of hang up our organization or company coats at the door and just be uh, just co-create, basically, without censorship or hesitation. That's the idea. So network foresight has in management science sailed up in the last five years or so as being popular, not because everyone likes to be among friendly people all the time, but because there are good results, special results that you can only achieve when you have an organization like Viable Cities. So this is unique. Olga also mentioned the portfolio management, and I'd like to think that you all, all of you that's interested in applying to future calls, should be interested in the portfolio management, because the future calls will be about things that are today white spots in the Viable Cities portfolios, things that should be there but are not there today. And this means that this is a bottom-up affair, and you are the bottom, actually. Some of us are the top. Uh, and you are the bottom. <laughs> and the good news is that the bottom is more important than the top in a network structure. So, as you can see, Viable Cities is nothing like what most of us are used to. Uh, the innovation co-creation, uh, the bad news there is that you have to do all the work. So, co-creation, what we do here is to try and provide you with a platform, a tool, uh, a thingy that really works. So with me today, uh, I have Sebastian Knab, who's done a lot of this for large um, uh, networked organizations on the commercial side as well as more on the academic side. So over to you, Sebastian. Thank you, Magnus, and uh, thank you all for, for having me here tonight, um, or today. I'm actually the first time with Viable Cities right now. I mean, I know Magnus for, uh, for around 10 years now. I know Olga for quite a while now, but uh, it's really my pleasure uh, to be in Stockholm uh, today and yesterday, actually, to, to get to know all of you. So maybe a little bit of, of background from myself. Um, I'm an industrial engineer by, by training. I studied in, in Germany, in Berlin, and uh, for the last 10 years, I've been actually working on, on everything around strategic foresight for networked organizations, the radar that Magnus just mentioned for the European Commission, and that's something we've been working on uh, together. Um, I've been working with corporates a lot, um, also for, uh, 
for doing foresight and providing processes and tools for foresight. Um, I've done my PhD in a related field. Um, I've done my PhD on, on business model innovation in the context of, of sustainability transitions. So that's really very much related to, to what we are doing here. And uh, the reason why I'm here today is that I know Marcus very, um, Magnus very well. We've been working together for, um, for, this, uh, for this network foresight. And uh, we want to, to show you a, a tool or introduce uh, you to a tool um, that is the innovation radar that we've used a lot um, in these contexts. Um, the first thing I want to show you is a video. It's a video that we have created um, after we have introduced an innovation radar for the GSMA. The GSMA is um, the GSMA, uh, the GSM Association. It's the association, the global association of mobile telecoms operators. So this association is also a network organization with the goal to understand future developments in the mobile and telecommunications environment and to understand also for their members how they can react to these changes, how they can co-create new solutions and, uh, and innovate together. So um, I will show you the video and then we will talk about the details afterwards. The telecommunications industry has undergone dramatic shifts. Even operators' core business is attacked by new communication services. 386 billion US dollars in revenues, once captured by operators, will have migrated to new players such as Skype, WhatsApp, and WeChat between 2012 and 2018. With the Global Mobile Radar, GSMA will offer a platform that aims at bundling industry knowledge, providing a holistic view of sources of disruption and change, and delivering validated insights for strategy building. The Radar is a global community for futurists, executives, and strategists in the mobile industry. You can share your knowledge and thoughts and begin a strategic conversation with industry peers. It enables you to explore the latest industry trends and navigate through the complex field of future developments and change. The radar screen helps you to easily monitor trends, understand relationships and their interdependencies. Look deeper and discover more information in structured trend profiles. Explore different ratings by industry colleagues and GSMA experts. and regional differences on a global or regional level. <coughs> on a discussion board, you can discuss and discover the future of the industry with experts from around the world at any time. GSMA will offer different workshop formats for exploiting the data efficiently, for stimulating discussion and creating actionable insights. Register now on the beta platform, try it out and provide feedback so that we can further improve it before its public launch later in 2016. So this is just to, to give you a sh short impression of uh, what we are actually planning to do here. Uh, it's um, about creating a platform just uh, like that, um, um, that enables actually a network organization like you are online to be able to co-create new solutions, to understand what's around, to understand the impact that it could have on viable cities and the future of cities. And, um, and this is what we're going to talk about uh, today. So to give you some more detail on this radar 
and what the elements of such a radar are. Now, what we saw in the video is the very fancy version of, of um, how this radar is implemented online. Now, it has a certain structure. Uh, so what is always part of such a radar is obviously the radar screen, which is a nice visualization, actually, of understanding what's going on. So what does this radar screen have? It has radar segments. And uh, you can say, OK, for my organization, for us, these are the segments we want to look into. It has a time horizon. So the logic is the closer it gets to you on the radar, the closer it gets to the middle, the closer it actually is to market, to realization or so. And when it's further off, you would say, well, that's maybe 20 years ahead. Uh, but we want to have it on the radar already right now. What else do we he have here? We have the dots. Uh, the dots are what we would call innovation opportunities. Um, and innovation opportunities are represented by what we call profiles. Uh, so you have an opportunity and you want to understand, okay, who are the main actors? What are the threats? What are the opportunities? Who is already active in the field? Uh, we heard that from internationalization, we're not alone. So who is already doing something there? We're gonna go into details um, <coughs> later. Huh? That's just as an overview for now. What else we can do with the radar is to assess opportunities in different dimensions. These are just uh, exemplary. Uh, to assess, okay, what's the value creation potential? How does it fit with capabilities? And so on and so forth. And this can also be represented in the radar. Uh, so the basic idea is to get a very good overview of the field that we are actually working on and interested in, in a structured way. Now the elements of such a radar, we're going to go through all of them briefly, are these. Uh, so first, the radar screen. Um, some weeks ago, uh, Olga and Magnus came to Berlin, where our office is based, and uh, we talked about, okay, how could this actually look like for viable cities? And now, I want to mention that all the things that we are showing are still also work in progress. Uh, so we're also using the opportunity today to also receive feedback from you and to work it in and to think about, okay, how could this radar really look like? So this is the radar screen as uh, we have it now. This should all be familiar to you. So four of these segments are actually, actually the focus areas that viable cities are working on. And one segment is what we call now others and open ideas. Uh, so this is um, the idea that this is a dynamic process. So at some point, we might come up with other ideas that actually do not fit the, the focus areas that we have at the moment. As for the assessment criteria, now how, how would we assess whether an innovation is, is interesting for us as viable cities or not? Um, we usually use this kind of framework uh, where we have this, this four fielder and we want to find assessment criteria that in, in every um, of these fields. Now attractiveness external, what does that mean? Attractiveness means how interesting is an innovation and external means in general, not only for viable cities. Uh, so one criteria overarching criteria that can be sub-criteria. One, one criterion that we came up with is desirability. Um, would anyone actually want this innovation? Would there be a market? Would uh, there be funding organizations uh, who, who want this? Uh, would there people be that, that want this? Then attractiveness from an internal point of view, we came up with a criterion viability, quite obviously. Uh, does it fit to the strategy that Viable Cities has? Uh, does it contribute to sustainability is becoming more smart, uh, to, to cities becoming smart and sustainable? Addressability is, is it even possible to, to have this innovation um, uh, being there, out there at some point? So feasibility would be external. Is anybody able to actually innovate that? While internal would mean, does it fit with the capabilities that viable cities have? So we would want to have things on the radar that are interesting for us, and we want to understand whether it's desirable, feasible, viable, and whether viable cities themselves are capable of doing that. Yeah. These are the initial ideas. We're going to work on that um, later today. You can have the opportunity to also give us um, feedback on those. Yeah. One example of how such a radar could look like, filled with some exemplary topics. Um, we have, for example, if you look into the mobility segment here, 
we've chosen some topics that are all related to shared mobility in some way. So what we see today, which would be on the inner circle here, free floating car sharing. So that could actually be something like car to go or drive now or these services. If we look more into the future, we see that some, some topics related to autonomous driving are actually coming up. Huh? So we might see at some point car sharing services based on autonomous cars, um, maybe in fenced areas to start with, that the third um, uh, radius and the fourth one, really autonomous cars all over the city um, to share. Um, this is just an, an example to show how also these time frames work. What we also have here is because we also want to prevent the silo thinking. I mean, it's nice to have a structure, but then again, we also want to, to have topics that are overarching. So what we can do also with a tool actually is to have topic clusters that, that, um, that are overarching different segments. Here as an example, we've chosen everything that has to do with sharing. No? So with the shared economy could be um, the cluster behind that. No? All right, and of course, with all the shapes, the um, colors, um, also with sizes, we can play around to, to represent the assessments. Huh? So we create a nice overview of every innovation that we have here. All right, with that, I hand over to, Marcos, uh, to Magnus for the final two things. So um, uh, these profiles um, that uh, Sebastian explained are underlying um, what is visualized in a radar is, is actually, if you think of it in an iceberg metaphor, we will together create a knowledge repository. And this will be useful um, for all the strategic projects, meaning for all of you. That's the idea. So Mikel in internationalization, he was talking about outlooks, scans, global excellence and so on. This is something that you can get out of not necessarily one simple radar picture, but the knowledge that is in this co-creation space. And Jason for entrepreneurship was talking about leveraging the network capital. So this means that uh, once we have this up and running, it will constitute one way, one complementary way of finding each other, who's interested in what and who's capable of doing what and who has time. Uh, and Charlie was mentioning the vibrant arena. We're hoping that this will become an important part of that vibrant arena and visualizing the relevant activities to some extent that can hopefully be done by radars. So this is a bit frightening if you're not a Siemens engineer or something like that. But um, the good news is that uh, you don't have to fill out one of these yourself completely ever. So it's really a collaborative effort to find out what sort of relevant stuff goes onto a sheet like this. Um, I know it's not, it's not very sexy and attractive at this stage, but trust me, once it's transmogrified into something else that can be visualized, it will be sexy. Uh, and it has some elements that all of you are familiar with, like opportunities and threats and so on. And down in the left corner, you'll see the, the quadruple helix. That's, that's a very scary concept already to me, but I'm getting used to it. Uh, even the triple helix was scary, but the quadruple one is really scary. But it's down there. Uh, and I'd like you to focus on the, on the upper left corner. Um, a title of something suggested by someone. So that's like the key. How do, you, how do you find a profile like this and who to talk to about contributing to it or questioning elements of it or just starting a discussion on something? We know that the, the example that uh, Sebastian took of uh, autonomous uh, driving vehicles uh, it has economic dimensions, it has technological dimensions, but it also has ethical dimensions and people have opinions about it. So this co-creation space is also meant to cater for that. So you can have discussions and you don't have to agree. In fact, it's a democratic thing that we don't all have to degree, uh, agree. So, so for the liquid roadmap, this will be vital to, to, to aligning and to, to getting new perspectives. Yes. 
Um, so once we fill it out, uh, it'll constitute then, as I said, the part of the iceberg that's not visible, but obviously a few people um, will like this and will like to detail uh, a profile like this. I know, I'm not guessing, because I met some of you on the, on the first strategy day that we had in this room. And uh, I was approached by people that said, how do I get my input into a co-creation space? Well, this is how you do it. This is the funnel. You put in stuff here and then it's in there. Uh, I also asked all of you uh, to send us to Liquid Roadmap, to all again myself, the people that give you the most headache in your day job. These are the people that are unbearable. They always have a lot of ideas and opinions and they always tell you you're wrong or, or, or make you feel guilty because you haven't read the latest white paper on something that obviously is going to change the world but you've never heard of it. These are the people that will do the bulk of the work of filling this out. Then you can discreetly go in and adjust it from your organization and then you'll see people coming from other organizations adjusting it even further. Maybe even picking a fight with your, with your person that, that is so hard to like but obviously has a lot of opinions and, and some, something to contribute. Send us those people to the workshops. I mean, I'd love to meet all of them. Uh, so, yeah, we can move on, I think. Um, then there is finally an, an online platform. And yeah, I'll, I'll let you, uh, Sebastian, have the final word on what, what it actually looks like. You, you saw the video, and that was a very, let's say, commercial example. It's industry driven, but it is a partner organization still. Uh, so for the GSMA, that it's obviously gonna be a different animal, what we're building here. But still, an online platform can also be scary for people. Should they be scared or? I don't think so. I think uh, an online platform actually helps you uh, to get along with that and not dealing with, ta with paper all the time. And uh, in particular for a networked organization, obviously that's nice. On the GSMA platform at the moment, there are 400 people registered uh, who more or less actively contribute. Uh, there needs to be a process behind it, obviously, when someone can do what. And, uh, and it's accompanied by a whole series of workshops, of panel discussions, of different elements actually that Olga mentioned also at the beginning. Uh, you can use information for that, from, from that as an input then to a workshop that you're doing, scenario workshop for example. And on the other hand, you can also have workshop results feeding into that. Uh. Um, as for the, the online platform, that's a screenshot now um, of, of, of how the radar can look like there. Um, we are currently in the process of building it up, basically. Yeah? So we showed you the basic structure. We are building it up, and as soon as there is a version that can be distributed and that people can look at, um, we will, of course, uh, let you know. Well, that's in the process right now. All right. Um, very good. So before we start... Um, with the workshop, uh, a part of that. Let's just quickly wrap up what, what I think this, this radar is really interesting for and all the organizations we've been working with um, uh, actually give us this, this feedback. Uh, so first of all, it's, it's the idea of systemically collecting um, information. Uh, I mean, we, we can crowdsource information. We have lots of, of, uh, of knowledge here in the room and also, I mean, in, the, in this program in general. So we ha will have a central platform where we can collect this information. Uh, so it's about contributing, but at the same time, it's also about understanding. Uh, so if I, as a Bible Cities member, or even in my organization only, I will be interested in what's the future of, of cities, I could take a look in the tool and see what other people have written about that who these people are, who the experts are, who are the ones to contact, also to mingle with, to find people to have a project with me. No? That's things that, that this tool can, can uh, be used for. At the same time, it will be very useful also to, to gain some transparency about processes for uh, calls, for example. If we have calls for projects, well, it will be based also on the information we have in this tool. Yeah, so it has been assessed by different people, so it's nothing that three people in an office uh, come up with the call. It will be based on actual crowdsourced information. Yeah, so it's also something that supports this portfolio management. Yeah. 
And then, of course, the final thing is also or, or the, the thing that we have here, um, what has been mentioned before, it's in a repository. Now we can have all the projects that are running within viable cities, but also outside of viable cities. We can have it in this tool related to certain topics. We can see what's going on, who are the people to talk to, um, where do we need projects, where do we have enough projects um, that the radar can, can provide. Now, we are moving towards the workshop part of it, where we actually want to gather also some feedback on what you have seen already. Um, and I think I can only repeat that, it's very important to us. Huh? We are in the process of, of getting this radar uh, active and online. We don't want to do it ourselves. We also want to profit from, from your knowledge and your experience. So we are very, very open also to, to your feedback throughout this day, but also later you see some email addresses here that you can always contact for that. All right, and then I see Asa, that is yeah. <laughs> coming up. <laughs> I'm coming here. Right. So uh, please come here, Sebastian and Magnus, so we can get in the right. So Ooh. I give you okay. this to divide in point. So just a few questions before we dive into kind of looking into the innovation radar a little more in detail. Uh, if I'm kind of uh, representing one of the organizations of the members mm. of Viable Cities, if I'm kind of a municipality uh, person, for instance, working with sustainability or something, what's the use of this uh, tool for, for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I can start. I think it really depends on what kind of organization you are. Yeah. If you are a city or municipality, I think this radar really provides you with the overview on future trends and developments and existing projects yeah. within the space of cities. Mm -hmm. If you ask what is the future of mobility, you filter topics in the mobility sector, you have them. If you want to see what are business models coming up, you filter with business models and you see that and you also see the actors working on that so you have this overview i think on the other hand if you're a researcher for example yeah and and you are working in a specific field on a specific technology for example you can also use this you can also go into the tool and see where is this technology actually useful mm -hmm. and because we have that that we have business models and we have technologies that are used for that or needed for that then i can see okay where where can i contribute where can i maybe write a paper on where can I join a project? Well, so it really depends on that. And these are, I think, the, the things that, that you can get out of that. Uh, adding to that, another possible answer is we don't know. Yes. So, I mean, <laughs> at the municipality, we have, um, I mean, I'm used to respecting what's called best practice. And here I know that Olga likes to talk of it as an emerging practice because all of this is dynamic. And since it supports bottom up and it means that someone working in the municipality must feel ownership for certain questions that they that they there are challenges to them on a daily basis and they can get support for those challenges but we don't quite know what those challenges are yet but we're looking forward to to learning about them and there for instance knowledge sharing will help us in understanding what is what is state of the art so to speak when it comes to municipality challenges and and opportunities and so on.